Hello, hello, hello. This is Tony Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, happy Saturday night. I got a fun one. I got Judge Arth losing his mind down in Texas, and uh, I want to get going on that. But just before I went on, I realized I said a stream the same time as Biggin. I, I chatted with Biggin. He, he, he says it's he says it's pretty good. It's a family law case, and he's got litigants going batshit crazy. <sighs> So what I think we're what I think I'm gonna do is redirect this stream to Biggin, and I think he might move his back a little bit. So let's get the party started, shall we? It's good times. Nice to see y'all. Let's go. All right, let me hear. She brings. See, I'm gonna use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple, and not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. Oh, sweet Jesus. What? All right, this is um, D1FM200-7166, the marriage, the marriage of Israel Velasquez and Crystal Velasquez. Appearances, please. Heather Godwin for respondent, Crystal Velasquez. Alfonso Hernandez representing Mr. Velasquez. Good morning. Good morning. For the record, I was pressing my space bar. I thought that unmuted me, but it didn't. There are the parties with us today. I got a space bar for you right yes, here. Sure. Yes, sir. And we have a first amended motion to modify temporary orders and to compel production. Is that what we're here on? Yes, Your Honor, and I believe Mr. Hernandez also has a, um, a a list of items that he'd like to bring before the court, and he said. Is there a separate motion for that? Yes, sir. There's a motion to modify our agreed temporary orders. And for further temporary orders. What day did you file that? That was filed on the 3rd of October. Of 2022. What about this third amended motion for enforcement of standing order? Your so. Honor, I tried to I tried to serve Mr. Velasquez through Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez would not accept service, nor give me Mr. Velasquez's address. And Mr. Velasquez had been evicted from his apartment, and we could not find him. So I forsook my efforts to serve him with an enforcement and ramped it down to just this motion to compel and, and asking for attorney's fees. I didn't I didn't think I could accept service for him on an enforcement action judge. Hold on a second. Let me pull this off. Well, well yeah, if you don't have service, not, it's not for the but, court. So. Um, OK. What about not telling her where he lives now? Mr. Velasquez uh, moved a couple of times in between the interim because he was looking for a place to stay. Um, that's part of our motion to modify is he doesn't have the funds to okay. get the into The question is, did you tell her his new address, yes or no? No, Your Honor. Why not? I, I didn't have that information at the time because he didn't couldn't have- you, Couldn't you obtain it and then give it to her? He didn't have a fixed address at the time. Does he have a place of employment? Uh, no, Your Honor. He's an independent contractor with a essentially running a business out of a van right now. He sure um, did. That's, again, part of our motion to modify the agreed temporary orders. He's living in a van down by the river. divorce has been on file for just over two years. There's no children. It was only a nine-year marriage when it was filed. It seems ridiculous that you all have not been able to move forward and resolve this uh, in this amount of time. Yes, sir. We we um, have other pending matters. Mr. Velasquez has other pending matters that we're hoping to get resolved before we finalize this divorce. That's part of the reason that it has been kind of in limbo. Your Honor, the issue is the disclosure of financial information so we can make a settlement. At this point, I have requested no disclosures were filed i have requested an inventory and appraisal miss castellanis velasquez has provided one 
I was before your court last December of 2021, I believe, requesting a motion to compel, and you requested me to send a deficiency letter, which I did in February. And I still have not gotten any kind of documents from Mr. Hernandez. The issues that are pending are Mr. Velasquez's um, criminal proceedings stemming from trying to strangle my client. So, well, actually strangling my client, <laughs> just not killing her. Um, so this, this, I, I am here on a motion to compel, number one, first and foremost, so I can compel the documents in order to go to mediation, which I don't mind going to, but I cannot go to mediation without financial documents. Hold on just a second. My printer's not acting right. All right, so I have Miss Velasquez says first amendment motion to modify temporary orders and compel production. The first thing is the inventory. Um, she wants an inventory as prescribed by Form 5 1 in the Texas Family Law Practice Manual. Why is that not possible to do, Mr. Hernandez? Your Honor, so I am I'm the second attorney representing Mr. Velasquez. Discovery was responded to. Um, Ms. Godwin is the second attorney. Um, has, it, has, this, has this inventory been ordered before? Yes. And so when, why has it not been completed? It, it has. Let me, let me um, get that for you. Well, but I, I don't need it. Ms. Godwin no. needs it. If it's been completed, why doesn't Ms. Godwin have it? Well, I, I think that's a good question. Uh, all of this discovery was turned over to Ms. Uh, Velasquez's first attorney, Mr. Pollack, um, on or about June, let's see, certified the 10th day of Thank March you. of 2021. So if, if Mr. Pollack and Ms. Godwin didn't get together to transfer all the discovery, um, I, I didn't have any part in that. An, in, an inventory is not really, an inventory is a separate thing that is not part of an 80 number, 80 item request for production. Those are usually conveyed when they're done. Do you have the inventory in your possession, yes, sir. Mr. Hernandez? Yes, sir, I do. And I mean, you, are you viewing it now? Are you viewing it now? I am uh, about to be. Miss you, we're coming over. Your Honor, we entered agreed temporary orders wait, by June. Wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> yes, I am, Judge, and I will. And it was signed when? Well, it was. Let me see. I apologize, Judge. We we've got a new filing system. I see. I think it is. I was prepared last year, but I don't have a signature on that one. All right, it's due by Thursday the 12th at 5 p.m. Yes, sir. And, and Ms. Godwin, is this this notation that this issue was discussed in temporary orders on June 18th and of 21 and temporary orders on October 31st, 2022? Is that what that notation is? Yes, Your Honor. All right. What about the, five, the income tax records from 2017 to 2020? If we have not provided those, we can get those to her by the 12th as well. I know that we don't have, and my client can probably speak to this a little better, but he hasn't done 21, I don't believe. Um, and probably not 22. Well, 22 just ended 10 mm -hmm. days ago. So nobody's done 22. <laughs> Uh, why is this not working? So we, we can certainly get those over by the 12th judge. I think we have All right. 2019 and, that, and 2020. What about, did you say 18 and 19? Let's see here. And, and you know, Ms. Godwin, quite frankly, at a certain point, you can, your client can request copies of the return from the IRS and at some point lawyers need to do that as a matter of ex expediency um it takes a while to get them from the 
IRS, but um, Your Honor. it makes more sense, perhaps. And transcripts can be acquired even faster. Um, in the old days, you could go to the IRS office and just wait in line and get them. Since the pandemic, I'm not sure you can still do that. But Thank you. I will institute that practice. But but 17 to 20 is going to be produced on the 12th. And then in the temporary orders in October of 21, there was an agreement that um, he would transfer IV remodeling to Ms. Velasquez, and that has not been done. I guess we would disagree with that characterization. Disagree that it hasn't been done or disagree that he was supposed to transfer it? Disagree that it hasn't been done. Um, well, is it more than just a name? Is it tools or is it just the, the ability to do business as um, IV remodeling or four? Is it for what? Is it IV or four? IV, Israel Velasquez. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, it's. Um... There are some tools, and 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 I I may not be representing exactly what's going on, but this is my understanding of it. There's three big storage boxes, like storage containers, that are all on located on property that Miss Mrs. Velasquez is, is in possession of. Tools are in those containers. There's three vans. Um, right. Mr. Velasquez has possession of one of those vans. Um, there is an office somewhere that Mrs. Velasquez is, is in possession and control of. Uh, the rest of it is kind of virtual stuff, you know, a website. Well, well looking, at, looking at the order from October 8th, <laughs> or, uh, that, it's actually June 18th, but signed in October of that year. It says that it's ordered that Crystal is appointed governing member of IV Remodeling Inc. Uh, I'm sorry, LLC. So in theory, perhaps there should have been a document created that said that. Then it says it's ordered that Israel shall restore all access to company accounts of IV Remodeling to Crystal. Did that happen? No, Your Honor. Mr. Velasquez is still operating the Instagram account the Facebook account, the Yelp account. Well, it, yeah. and, it, and it says company accounts. I was assuming that meant bank, but it's not really clear. I guess that could be Instagram as well. And then it's ordered that Israel shall continue work in good faith, complete existing projects for IV remodeling. I, I think that was done. I mean, that's 18 um, months ago. Is there anything right. even left on that regard? Uh, it's my understanding there's not. Miss Godwin, do you have any any belief that there's any existing business from then still outstanding? Yes, he's he's still operating out of a no, Ivy no existing Bay. projects, existing oh, I, projects. I don't believe that existing projects at the time at, in June of 2021 are, are still. All right, uh, and that's resolved. It, it's ordered that Israel cease entering new contracts doing business as IV remodeling. Has he entered any new contracts since June of 21? No. And then the parties- uh, Untrue. Well, the parties agree that may begin operating a new remodeling and design business, presumably with a different name. Has he started a new company? Yes, yes. Your Honor. And what's that new company called? Called, everlasting uh, Ever sorry it's called everlasting okay and so so then what about control of the bank accounts he has never relinquished control of the bank accounts your honor okay. i'm remodeling is, stop, is stop, remodeling? stop stop has he relinquished bank accounts requires a yes or no answer this is not no, an invitation. Honor. This is not an invitation to just start talking about whatever you want. We'll be here all day if you two keep going on these tangents. I'm going through the order bit by bit to see what was supposed to be done 
what has been done, what still needs to be done, and I want the fewest words necessary <laughs> used to answer these questions. I want the fewest words necessary is yet another t-shirt that needs to be made. So I agree. <laughs> I could use what about whole transferring, life. getting his name off the bank accounts, Mr. Hernandez? It's my understanding. Ms. Velasquez took him off all of those bank accounts. That's Ms. my Catalan, understanding. Did, did you take him off the bank accounts? Ms. Castellan, unmute. Yes, Your Honor. Did you it's take them off yes, the bank accounts? Yes, he was removed. All right, then that's done. So, Miss Miss Godwin, what information do you have that he signed new accounts as IV remodeling since um, June of twenty one? More than you know, Mark. More than you know. He, he is still advertising and operating online as IV remodeling. Is depleted. I do not know as what the contract as evidenced by what. By, by screenshots of those accounts that are recent that I put into. Box. Thank you guys. So there's an there's an Instagram you, post for IV that he made. Since, Several. Tell me an exhibit number five. How about nineteen? Respondents nineteen. Yes, seventeen through. The Ivy Remodeling website still has his contact information on it. The website itself for the business. The, right. Facebook, the Facebook page is still his information. 17 through 21. Well, okay, 19 is just Yelp. Where's where something showing that he has posted something new since June of 21? I was Your expecting Honor. you to tell me that he posted something on um, on um, Instagram that had a date that was clearly um, business related. Your Honor, I these the posts that are in evidence today are all after June of 2021. So there's well, nothing in evidence yet. There's nothing right. in evidence yet. Oh, okay. Well, Mr. Hernandez can... is stealing my stealing my line, <laughs> but he is correct. But I'm looking at I'm looking at 21, which is says it appears to be Instagram. It says Ivy Remodeling LLC. Um, two are photos of. Is that? I don't think that's him. Some guy with a big beard, and I can't. That is him. Yeah, well, okay, I just can't. I can't overlay a beard on what I'm seeing today and say that that's the same thing. There's a photo of a bottle of prosecco. There's some Spanish language that unfortunately I don't read, and there's something that says exit. Um, I, I don't know that anything that I'm looking at looks like that it is average. It's it's the IV remodeling website. But it looks like personal. I mean, there's a picture of an avocado for crying out loud. There's a picture of him with painted nails eating an avocado. There's a picture of some tools. There's a picture of a bunch of vegetables. There's a picture of him drinking out of a bottle of milk. None of this seems to be advertising. None of it. Well, he, he, All right. He is ordered to change over the the administrator of each social media account by five o'clock on January 12th of 2023. I missed the avocado incident first time through, <laughs> but it's solid. Your Honor, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but we are also here on a motion to, to modify. I am this. going by your motion line by line. We will get to that. Right okay. now we're talking about the motion to compel production and Avocados. And, and, and that's the first. Yeah. I was just talking about the first paragraph of your amended motion to modify temporary orders. And social media. And so now the second thing is she wants payments for support. Then the third thing is that he's failed to pay property taxes. Um, 
And I thought she was already collecting rents because there's a note by um, Judge, I thought there's a note by Judge Mozzie to that effect. There's a note on, well, my, no, it's my note from December of 21. There are no immediate money issues and Hernandez's client was content with Godwin's client receiving the rents for her support. So that's what that says. So to me, that says that she's getting the rent. As I recall, there's like three rental properties. That's correct. And so where's that money going? Miss Miss Castellan, Miss Velasquez is collecting the rents and also paying the property taxes on the on the properties. Uh, all right, you, something, Your Honor, you just you just something in the temporary orders that says he's supposed to pay property taxes. That would be the standing orders, Your Honor. No, he's not. The standing order doesn't make him pay property taxes. Well. It, he was paying property taxes on on these properties. is there a court order that says there is no court order your honor not interrupt me when i am talking is there a court order that says he's supposed to pay property taxes no your honor why would he pay the property taxes if she is receiving the rents? Why should she get the money and then he has to pay the expenses? Where does that logic? Exactly. She she kept the the rents in order to pay the property taxes because he had let them lapse and they were okay. late. All right. Well, then she's getting all right. So I don't see a problem. Thank you. It's January 10th, property taxes for 2022 are due at the end of this month. Is there, um, actually, uh, one moment. Yeah, Mark, that's not the law, but it, it is the reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how the world works. Um, have the property taxes been paid for last year on all these properties? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Next thing on your motion is you want to turn interim fees. Oh, thank you, Sheila. That was nice. Very generous. $1,800. That's everything in your motion to modify. Am I missing something? Request. My motion to modify also requests that IV remodeling be, be for us to withdraw the, the temporary orders that Ms. Velasquez is owner of Ivy Remodeling. It's nothing but a shell now. She was supposed to, in June of 21, she was supposed to take over running it, advertising for it, creating new contracts, and <laughs> that she, that she, that's what she wanted to operate. It, it agree. Actually, I, I think y'all agreed to that. I don't think even that that was my um let me look that was a different judge's order i think you're you're right judge i don't mean to interrupt you but we we did have an agreement at our very first temporary orders right. hearing. june 18th hearing on temporary orders uh i don't uh, these last names of people um it was the 455th um it doesn't say the judge's initials but it says agreement read into the record. And so that temporary orders that I've been reading off of is what it took y'all forever to get it entered and y'all got fussed about, about that. But um, uh, that's what y'all agreed she'd start, she would be operating the business. So yeah. why hasn't she done that? Because Mr. Velasquez, if you go to the IV remodeling website itself, all right, this is 18 it's, it's months ago. This could have been all done a long time ago. Y'all failed to do it. I'm not changing anything. She continues to operate IV remodeling or not. If she doesn't want to, she can just quit. She can leave it. There are there are open there are open cases, uh, liability cases against the company. Of what? It's, it's just debt from Mr. Velasquez failing in contracts. Before well, who's owed money? 
then I I am looking for documents from Mr. Hernandez. Well, then how do you know there's money owed if you're uh, okay? You are representing to me that there is money owed, yet you cannot tell me anything. Ms. Castellan has lawsuits in her possession that, that show that sued? there are open lawsuits <laughs> against. Have they been sued? Yes. Have they been yes, sued? Your Have they been yes, Your sued? Honor. No, I think I think it's just stop talking. Count to five when I stop talking before you open your mouth. Wow. Has Ms. Castellan been served with citation in these suits? Yes or no? Ms. Castellan, can you answer that question as to the as to how advanced these claims are? All I've seen are are um claim letters and demand letters yes your honor specifically there are two different suits one have you been sued individually or just in the name of of iv remodeling llc not individually just in the name of iv remodeling um, did you receive did that service come to you by a process server or did you just see it in the court record and know about it that was mailed to our home back in 2020. Well, that's before this that's before this lawsuit was even filed. That's correct. That one. So that's not a divorce problem. That's look, she's the one that wanted to run the business. She went in June of in June of 21, when y'all made this agreement, she knew that those lawsuits were out there and that they had to be dealt with. How is that my problem today? All right. What else <laughs> is there about <clears throat> IV remodeling? And there was my thumbnail, Biggin. <laughs> I mean, this is you know, this is good. So Biggin, you got one. The, the litigants yes. are 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 losing their minds coming up, right? Absolutely. It is so incredible. This, like, like I said, after this, I I put I put a thing so it whatever i'll redirect to your stream awesome. i hear it's good stuff this is it different is. The, the the litigants make sense here the attorneys roughly speaking make sense but arth is just he's not even that bad in the end he's okay to them but mm -hmm. he just does not feel like being bullshitted today yeah he's he's a straight shooter um he always know where you stand with him <laughs> just answer the damn question i've got a yeah. call and i want to get through it but it's it's comical to watch it is oh it is your honor he 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 did not transfer ivy remodel she may have taken him off of the 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 bank all right. account all i can do all i can do is i've ordered him to change the administrators on all these social media accounts by the end of business on thursday um there's nothing more I can do. Either she's going to run it or she's not. What else do we need to talk about? Uh, the attorney's fees for the motion to compel. Well, put on some testimony. Ms. Castellan, did you, did you hire me for this divorce suit? Yes, ma'am, I did. Have you incurred attorney fees as a result of this divorce of the motion to compel? Yes, I have. Did we try to obtain this information from Mr. Velasquez um, on as of June 18th of 2021? Yes. Did we request the information again in December of 2021? Yes. Did we send a deficiency letter in February of 2022? Yes. But have we received the documents as of yet? No. Your Honor, we would, re we would request attorney's fees in association with the motion to compel these documents. Do you have any other testimony on attorney's fees? 
I am an attorney here in Austin. My rate is $300 an hour. It's a rate that's reasonable and, and expected for the um, work that I've done um, pursuing this motion to compel. And I spent time, reasonable amount of time on the motion to compel in an effort to get these records that we originally agreed to exchange on June 18th of 2021. She's about to and cry. attorney's fees in relation to my attempt to obtain these records total $2,500, no, $1,800. Oh, he's just letting her squirm. She's yeah. waiting for him to say, okay, she didn't she didn't lay a sufficient foundation. First of all, the witness did a fantastic job. It's simple stuff, but the but the client doesn't know. The client doesn't know if they receive the records, the client doesn't know what she's trying whatever. And yeah. and I give Ms. Castellan a couple of points for for understanding the drill and getting it done. She did great. Yeah. The attorney was a little sloppy in laying her foundation. The judge is like, you got to say some more if I'm going to award these things. Yeah. Which, so, which so tell the truth. Helpful. But then so, he just so, lets her sit in awkwardness. <laughs> and I, you know, that's what's going on here. Yeah. Any so when's the last time you cried in court? What's that? When's the last time you cried in court? <laughs> <laughs> that would be um, never. <laughs> to Hernandez. There's no crying in court. No, Your Honor. No crying in baseball. No crying in court. Yeah. Is there a <laughs> copy of this February demand letter? Yes, Your Honor. It's R12. All right. Moving to Mr. Hernandez's motion. He has an agreed motion. I'm not an agreed motion. He has a motion. To modify the orders from June 18th of 2021. Um, there's three houses, Manor Road, High Chaparral, and Horizon Park. Is that right? That's correct, Judge. No, no Your Honor. There, the Horizon Park is not owned by the parties. It's just a land use contract. What is so a rental agreement to use some property? Yes, Your Honor. And what's on that property? Ms. Velasquez's family home. Well, it's a rental there. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Velasquez has rented a house that her family uses. Who's the lessee? Ms. Velasquez, can you speak to that? Your Honor, um, my parents do not live on the property. It's a three That's acre. Not the question. The question is, is it owned or rented by the community? It's been rented. And who's the lessee? Who signed the lease? His name is Eric Kimple. That's the lessee. Who owns the property? Robert and Maria Castellon, my parents. Well, then it's your parents' property. Yes, sir. Well, Miss Godwin, you don't even you didn't you said it was a land use contract. It's not according to her, it's not even their property. Although I bring it up because Judge Mozzie mentions it in her note on the 20 of uh, October 21st. So it says and then pivots to request to divide the rental income on three properties, Maynard, Chaparral, and Horizon Park. Mr. Hernandez, does, does Mr. Velasquez have a different opinion on the ownership of the Horizon Park property? 
Yes, sir. Um, the Horizon Park property has a home that Mr. Velasquez purchased from Ms. Velasquez's parents. The home is kind of a manufactured home that was put on the property. That oh, sweet home Jesus. is being leased out to apparently this gentleman named Garrett somebody. But who owns the dirt? Uh, apparently Ms. Castellan's parents do. It was supposed to be subdivided at some point. It never got done. Mr. Velasquez purchased a part of that land. By a deed that's been carved out or? Well, that never got done, uh, but he does have a real estate contract for it. That was in 2018. Oh, this well, is who ugly. Gets, who does oh, Mr. Yeah. Kempel, is what it Kempel, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Who, who does Mr. Kempel pay the rent to? This is like a law school hypothetical. Party A and Party B do a, a bunch of incredibly stupid things, and uh, we'd like you to untangle that in long form in a blue book, handwritten. Thank you very much. It works as long it as everybody gets along. Yep. In your name? It's it's a complete mess um, now. Um, Writes a check to you, gives you cash. What? Yes. Yes. It's a direct deposit into my bank account. Well, it wouldn't seem like it was the parents' property if she's getting the money. But that's not for me to decide today. All right. So then there's two other properties, Mainer Road and High Chaparral. Correct. Any other properties? Uh, not that I'm aware of. And who lives at 5411 Mainer? Your Honor, uh, that, I'm sorry. That property is being leased. To who? Morgan Knowles and Antonio Maldonado. Well, you're in the right place, Anna. <laughs> What's the least? They can be fun. <laughs> One year, August 22nd to August 23rd. Have you provided Mr. Velasquez a copy of that lease? Um, I believe so. Yes. No. How much rent is being paid on that property? Since August, uh, 2700 a month. Is there a mortgage on that property? There is not a mortgage. Um, 1203 High Chaparral. I believe Armando Trejo lives there. The rent is $1,500 a month. There's not a mortgage on that property either. And I believe that is directly deposited into Mrs. Velasquez's account. Is that correct, Ms. Velasquez? The ten that current tenant, the tenant that Mr. Alfonso named, he currently doesn't live there anymore. Well, but it's a different, so, it's a different so, tenant. So who lives there now? His name is Alberto Medina. Is there a lease, a written lease? There is a month-to-month -month lease there. Is there a written lease? Yes. Yes, there is a rent lease. For yep. How much a month? Seventeen hundred. Just and when was that lease signed? Uh -huh. That lease was signed. Um, I believe it was November of twenty two. Twenty two. Yes. Has that been provided, to Mr. Velasquez? That one has not. There's some information. Some. Well, in Judge Mozzie's note, mostly over real estate, those are the assets. October of 21, <laughs> she says in her note that Miss Velasquez and her parents live at the Horizon Park property. Was that true back in October of 21? Yes, sir. Yes, it was. When did you all move out of that property? I moved out of that property August 2022. When did your parents move out of that property? My parents live at the property. Still. Mr. Kimple? 
with Mr. Kempel? No, sir. In, in a different dwelling. Mr. Hernandez, what do you want to say? Well, I was going to say, if I understand the situation correctly, it's a it's a large three acre plot of land. And so they have a home. Uh, Miss Mrs. Velasquez's parents have their own home on that land. What it sounds like is that the plan was to subdivide the land where the manufactured house is, whether that is, I mean, I could see where that could be a plan with nothing being in writing. I hesitate to say it's a plan, but I can see how that spooled out. And is there money owed on the manufactured house or is that paid for? Paid for. All right. And that, and I'm sorry, how much is that monthly rent? The monthly rent for the mobile home, it's $2,000. That includes utilities. That you pay. Yes. So you're getting $2,2700 and $1,700. Right? Yes. And then you're paying the taxes. Yes. And yes, and repairs. And how much were the taxes? It's been since 2021, 2022. It's been over. No, I want to know how much the taxes were for 2022. Between all three properties? No, uh, well, individual. I want you to list them individually, but yes. Okay. Let me um, just bring up the specific amount. So for 1203 High Chaparral, the amount of taxes owed for 2021. No, I said 2022. For 2022. Okay. Can you give me one minute, please? This is maddening. I believe I have these documents in in box. No, oh, well, okay. Tell me. Tell me. Arthur nearly it. loses his mind here. He cannot the exhibit give us a is R4 <laughs> for Manor Road. One moment. Good for us. <laughs> R4 shows. Five thousand one oh five sixty seven do. Was that paid? Yes, Your Honor. When was that paid? I entered into a payment plan, so it was paid over the year twenty twenty two. And then no, the no, no. That's if you paid taxes in twenty twenty two, that was for twenty twenty one. So the full so, amount. Okay, ma'am, taxes for the year are not billed until October or November. They're not due till December 1st. They're not delinquent till January 31st. If you paid taxes before October or November, you were paying for last year. You're right. So there's. Yeah, it's almost like Judge Arth knows what he's talking about. <laughs> like he's the done taxes this for 2022 have not been paid, correct? That's incorrect. I paid them the 25th of December, 7,600. Then why can't, how much? 7,600. You just can't answer a straight question. You're telling me that in late December, you paid $7,000, which paid all of the 22, 2022 taxes, plus probably some 21 taxes, because the tax bill is only 5,100. The seven thousand, the seven thousand six hundred that I paid on December twenty fifth was for twenty twenty two year. Well, but the taxes because were only fifty one hundred. I'm reading the tax bill. The taxes were fifty one hundred, not seventy six hundred. If that you tax paid bills, 70, I'm sorry to interrupt. I believe that tax bills for twenty twenty one. Then what about the twenty twenty two taxes? That was in the amounts of seven thousand six hundred, which I paid on December twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Christmas Day. That evidence, Miss Godwin. Uh, I'm sorry. How much was it? Seven thousand six hundred. Where's that evidence, Miss Godwin? I don't have that bill, Your Honor. Can, All right. What about me. the taxes on um, Maynard? And that was. Wait, I thought you said that was high chaparral. Correct. And then what about the high chaparral taxes? Your 
Your Honor, the amounts that I just provided, those are for High Chaparral. You just said they were for Maynard. I, I wish someone could answer a straight question with accurate information. Was the 7,600 for Maynard or High Chaparral? 7,600 is for 1203 High Chaparral. And the tax bill that Ms. Godwin has uploaded is for 5,400 and it's for 2021. I, I don't feel like I have good information here, Ms. Godwin. I, I don't, I cannot trust anything you all are saying. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing for money, Ms. Castellan, other than collect these rents, if anything? Do you have a job? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I am a realtor. And, and how much money did you make in 2022? Um, it was around twenty thousand dollars. And Mr. Hernandez, what does your client do? Uh, Mr. Velasquez is a uh, an independent contractor. He's doing carpentry work now as kind of a laborer. But as you can see, Judge, he had a, an accident um, earlier in this week, and he may be out of work for a little bit. I, which I makes can't sense. tell he has an accident. I see he has a bandage on his face. No. So he may he may be out of work for a few weeks um, just because he's not supposed to do any labor of that sort, which what makes our motion even more pressing. What kind of accident was he in? Um, he was cutting a piece of tile, uh, kind of initially checking to see if the machinery worked properly and, and how thick or hard the tile was, and a small piece of tile uh, shot up right into his eye and cut his cornea. Wow. I have already scolded him for not wearing um, protective eyewear, which he knows better because he has lots of experience. Um, but he said it was the very, very first piece, and he was just kind of making sure. What? Did the attorney just say he scolded his client for not wearing, wearing <laughs> eyewear? Well, I hope somebody does. Good night. I mean... Well, okay, yeah. it's a dumb thing, but it's a it's it's not something you say to the judge in the middle of court. Yeah, that's yeah. You're not a supervisor on site. Yes, of course, you should be yeah. wearing eyewear, but I, I find that a strange thing to say to the judge. Hmm. Sure, the machine worked properly, and kind of checking the thickness of the tile, and it was just kind of a freakish thing that happened. And, and what kind of money did he make in 2022? 2022 was a, a rough year, um, about 25 or 26,000 if I, I, I don't have those, I don't have that income uh, information exactly, Judge. There was, there was periods of, of non-work going on. Period, periods of not work? Miss, yeah. um, there's a domestic violence <laughs> allegation, is there not? Uh, I can't have those. There is justice. In fact, was maybe even Mr. Velasquez arrested? That's correct. Yes, is, there a, is that case still pending? Yes, sir. Is there a protective order? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir, but I, I think it's invalid. Um, I've, I filed a motion to vacate that. Uh, uh, that's not... An EPO or a protective order issued in the family law context? So, Your Honor, um, there was originally an EPO many, many, many months ago when he was initially arrested on that felony charge. That EPO has expired. Well, yeah, those are always just 30, right. 60, or 90 days. Right. Right. Miss Godwin uh, filed a new application for a protective order. A temporary ex parte protective order was rendered uh, by Judge Crump some time ago. May 27th of 2022. However, there was never a hearing held um, to determine whether that protective order should be made longer or not. Um, so it's technically invalid under the code, which is what well, my- Well, it's not invalid. What? Hold on, hold on. I would say that Judge Crump did not read this document very correct, very closely. I concur. Uh, uh, Miss Miss Godwin has snuck in language that is not 
consistent with protective orders. It says these temporary ex parte protective orders shall be effective immediately and binding on Israel Velasquez and shall continue in full force and effect until final decree of divorce. That is highly inappropriate. I, I did not sneak in that that language. I believe that Judge Crump's office did. There's no docket note that says anything about that. So, so I, Mr. 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 Hernandez, I would suggest to you that it would be in your client's interest to set that matter for a hearing for a resolution. It is not my understanding that, and, and, and Ms. Godwin, I'm going to check with Judge Crump's office to see what she says about this. Yes, I, 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 highly, I did not It's intended. highly irregular and inappropriate to have a permanent ex parte um, protective order against somebody. Um, it should have expired by its own terms on uh, June 13th. Um, and so she, if, if Judge Crump did that, then I would suggest that she erred in doing that um, and, and it should be undone. So, but anyway, Judge, so, if any, I may. so, so no, cause that's without telling me the address of Ms. Castellan, where are you living now in a separate residence? Yes, that's correct. In a separate residence that you're paying for. Yes, sir. And how much is that rent? or payment what is it um it's currently two thousand dollars a month is it rent yes sir house or apartment an apartment anybody else living there with you paying rent no long term mr hernandez what does mr velasquez know about these demand letters that we started the conversation about. <laughs> There's actually a, a new lawsuit. Um, it is against Mr. Velasquez uh, personally and his new company, Everlasting Home Design. The others, not against, uh, it's not against IV remodeling. Correct. That that's the new one. I think there was some pending litigation. Um, well, if it was, if there were demand letters from 2020. And that's not devolved into a lawsuit, then I would think that it's probably not going to, although that's no guarantee, but but it seems like we're coming on three, it's more than two years. It seems like something would have been done if it was gonna be done. Right. We have filed an answer in the new case, but how much uh, is alleged roughly? Is there an amount? Yes, sir. Um it's, it's in the neighborhood of $26,000 or something like that. And the um, Mainer property is what has, no, which one has the homestead designation? High Chaparral? Uh, I, I believe it's the Mainer property. High Chaparral is in Williamson County, right? Correct. So Mainer would be the likely one since this is Travis County. That's the vibe I get. They never lived at High Chaparral, I take it. It was a remodeled, that home was bought and remodeled. That's to, fine, uh, that's fine. But, but you, I shouldn't say this because I don't know the rest of the facts, but I do get the sense that Israel Velasquez is getting absolutely hosed in this deal. Yeah. Not particularly by ARTH, by, by prior rulings and what's going on. He's got a permanent temporary restraining order against him. She gets the money for all this stuff. This guy's a contractor. You're telling me he didn't bust his ass to get those things in rental shape and do all that stuff. Of course he did. So, I, I someone mean, in the, I, someone in the chat said I don't know. You know, right. but it, it just appears to me it, it, like they don't have kids or whatever, but it's just like, okay, everything is hers. Anything that yeah. you two um, did together is hers. Yeah. Someone Go in the away, chat Mr. Said Velasquez. That, you know, maybe yeah. he did really nasty stuff that I'm not aware of and he deserves it. That's possibility. Yeah. But I'm just saying, based on what I see here, I, I'm kind of feeling sorry for him. Someone in the chat said his first attorney uh, wasn't all that great. I don't know. I, I just read right. that. That's a possibility. You've got two paid for houses. 
Um, there's some allegations of waste. There was something in the file about him having bought a new $76,000 Jeep and then immediately wrecking it. Um, am I remembering that correctly? There, there was a, there was an allegation that that was done, but um, that car was fully insured with gap coverage. It was covered. He well, needed there was something. a wreck. There was yeah. a wreck. That's right. The part that was not correct is her pleading that said she didn't know about insurance. Well, she may not have known about it. I don't know why she didn't ask Mr. Hernandez that question or your predecessor. I don't understand why any why why it's so hard to convey information between the two counsel, but there you have it. Um, um, and then there was some other allegation about poor spending. Um, what was that? So, Ms. Godwin, you filed a third amended motion where you list this Jeep issue again. And do you not already know the resolution of that? We do not know the re resolution of that, Your Honor, because information is not forthcoming from Have Mr. you asked, Hernandez. is there a letter from you to Mr. Hernandez about the Jeep? No, Your Honor. Why not? If, you're making, if you're making an allegation, then why are you not seeking the information which could be readily resolved. I've been seeking the inventory. Is there a letter appraisal? from you to Mr. Hernandez about the Jeep? Not specifically about no, the Jeep. No, stop. No. There's allegations. He's taken numerous vacations, bought, bought prostitutes, and drugs with community funds. All right. Do you have a budget, Mr. Hernandez, for Mr. Velasquez? Okay, so th this stuff here, th they keep alleging that he's got a Jeep. The Jeep was smashed. They collected insurance and covered it. They right. both know it. She continues yeah. to put this in a petition to him. And, and what the judge is saying is, hey, have you asked him about it? That isn't just a good idea. That's the freaking law. It is in Illinois. It is under the federal rules. If you go in seeking something on a motion in front of a federal judge or a judge in Illinois, and you haven't asked opposing counsel yet, they might tell you to pound sand. They might ignore you. But if you if you don't have a writing saying, hey, what about the Jeep? Mm -hmm. You're going to get this or worse. You're going to get sanctions. Yeah. It could be she's seeing it. You hear her voice breaking up. She's getting emotional. Well, yeah, but it's garbage. It, it, she just wants to. She she's throwing things to make it her motion look more substantive mm -hmm. than it is. Oh, I'll say, yeah. And not a good idea. And this, yeah, and Judge Arth is not fooled by this. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> He's sharp. Yeah. Okay. Here we Dear go. Your Honor, it is our P2 in the box. Then you need to ask Mr. Velasquez some questions about his budget. Mr. Velasquez, raise your right hand. You swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give us the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Mr. <laughs> Hernandez. Uh, Mr. Velasquez. Uh, please state your full name for the record. My name is Israel Velasquez. <clears throat> Mr. Velasquez, what are you doing for work right now? Uh, I currently not working and staying home because my accident in my eye. Uh, I have a when you're not when you're not injured. What is your work <clears throat> for the last? Four months, I've been working as a carpenter, Finnish carpenter, uh, through one of my contractors that he were working for me when I was running IB remodeling. His name is Francisco Montoya, and he were paying me $15 an hour. Um, and also, I have done three jobs in my side during those four months. Uh, 
one is small job and the other ones were kind of normal and under everlasting home design that if you allow me my owner i can point it up that i been used these companies since since i registered just to answer the question asked by mr hernandez yes so mr velasquez um i'm going to share my screen here with you i hope you can see it is he on a phone or a computer are you on a phone mr velasquez or are you on a laptop yes on the phone yes can can you see my screen Oh, that's just one of my big, big pet peeves. When you ask people, when you give them two options, is it A or B? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not helping. It's not helping. Say, yeah, A or B. Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, I can see it better now. Okay. Do you recognize this document? It's titled? Yes. Okay. You sat down with my office and you prepared uh, these numbers, correct? Self-employment income? Yes. Now you're a, a 1099 uh, yes. independent contractor, correct? Yes. Okay. So no taxes come out of your checks. You just get paid checks, correct? Yes. Well, he pay me cash sometimes and another times check. Okay. But he doesn't pull taxes out of it, correct? No. Okay. Um, and then this part here is your budget. You're renting a room, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and you pay $1,000 a month for that room? Yes, with bills, it's $1,000, and sometimes 1050 970 depending on the bills. Okay. Not less than 800 not less than 900 Okay. Um, now, you said that you may have to not work for a little bit. Can you please tell me about that? Tell the court about that. What What was the doctor's recommendation? So, unfortunately... Uh, what was the doctor's recommendation? What was the doctor's recommendation? Just answer the question two weeks straight resting and for two months not lifting be close to dolls or strain myself in anywhere because i can wow. uh, like damage my eye doing that is it your understanding that there's danger of infection yes okay that would be very very bad correct Yes, it would be very oh, good bad. Lord. Okay. Mr. Velasquez. I mean, it's it's minor in the whole scheme of things, but that's a horrible question. It would be very, very, it's leading and it's also infantile. Yeah. Um, you were asking the court to redistribute the rents from the properties. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you need approximately you sure can uh, let me pull that back up i'm sorry i've represented a lot of guys like this you're short about twelve hundred dollars a month from what you're making to what you need every month correct approximately yes so are you asking the court to redistribute twelve hundred dollars a month of the rent so that you can meet your monthly obligations I would like to, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess you would like 50% of the rents, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. I love him. <laughs> tell, can you tell the court a little bit about the house that is on Ms. Velasquez's parents' property? Yes. We've already can you talked say, about that. Underlay, okay. underlay. I didn't know if you wanted some clarity, <laughs> Judge. No, no, it's real clear that it's a mess. Um, <laughs> She's getting the rents. Um, the property appears to be listed still in the in the um, parents' name, 
there was perhaps an agreement to hack off part of it and give it to them or them buy it or whatever that deal was the Velasquez is paid for the manufactured house right yes yeah right. I own no, so I, so, no so I I understand I, I understand the deal I I do it's it's you know it's a mess but I understand it no you don't really really don't so, need anything sir okay it's, you know, people do stuff on a handshake all the time, and it only becomes a problem when you have split ups like this, then what the deal was becomes complicated. And that's just the way it is. And these are the cards that we have been dealt and nobody has to apologize. It's just one of those things. Um, Mr. Velasquez, what car are you driving now? I'm driving a cargo van. I want to point it out that we have two contracts under the 1005 Horizon Park. One is the Pier and B house that I purchased before I got married through uh, Roberto Castellan. We have the contract of it. And second, we have the contract of buying and subdividing through a, a real estate lawyer in Cedar Park. We have the contracts, we have the wheels, and also we have the floor plans of the division of that property. And also they have signed the contracts. Mr. Hernandez has the copy of those contracts where we have the wills of Roberto and Maria Castellan and we have the real estate contract where it's a figure that I pay in cash for that half of the property. And we also have the map of how to divide it. Okay. All right. But it's really not before us today, so you don't need to talk anymore about it. The cargo van. Are you driving one of those cargo vans? Yes. Okay. Um, are you asking the court today to order Ms. Velasquez to return the Toyota Tacoma that you were driving when this divorce was filed? Yes. Uh, Judge, that's all we've got on our motion to modify the temporary orders. Cross, Mr. Scott. Yes, the Mr. Velasquez, the cargo van that you are driving is it um, an IV remodeling asset? Yes, and my understanding. Um, I have no more questions. Any other witnesses, Mr. Hernandez? Uh, no, Your Honor. Any witnesses, Ms. Godwin? Yes, um, I'll call Crystal Velasquez. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give us three full truths and nothing but the truth? Yes. Go ahead. Ms. Velasquez, oh, what no. vehicle are you driving? Great to hear that. 2016 Toyota Tacoma. Do you have any other vehicles? No, I do not. And let's go over your budget. All right, do you recognize this document? Which is labeled what? R2. Yes. Uh, what is this document? The budget? Yes. Is this an accurate reflection of your income? Um, yes, it looks pretty accurate. Okay. Is this an accurate reflection of your of your bills? Um, the insurance has gone up significantly since Israel doesn't pay insurance. All right. Miss if, Godwin, when was this document prepared? When was this you document prepared, Miss Velasquez? I believe it was 2021. Well, then it's not really helpful for 2022. <laughs> 2023. <laughs> These had <Is> enough. <laughs> 
Ms. Velasquez, if you if you were to lose the rental income, would you be able to afford your bills? No, I would not be able to afford my bills. I have no more. That might be time to cut your bills, huh? Questions, Your Honor. Yeah. Only the two cars, the van and the Tacoma, is that correct? Israel has possession of four vehicles, which is... What other vehicles does he have? 2012. This turns out to not be true, as far as I can tell. You, you guys tell me what you think. 12 Nissan Sentra, the 2013 cargo van that he drives, the 2020 Jeep truck, and the... Um, There's the Jeep that's crashed and, and was paid for by insurance, and she damn well knows it. I, I bring it I, up again. I, that's where I think this is really disingenuous, as Judge Simpson would say, bordering on spurious. And she's and she's got a strange affect. You come on what she's doing now. I will say this. I, I'm I'm looking forward to whatever you got up your sleeve, Biggin, because I, I I hear it gets uh, hair gets crazy on your clip. Oh yeah. But, I will say this. I, I'm I'm not sure about her honesty, and I don't want to like trash her because I don't know enough about this hearing. Maybe she is being honest about everything, but she doesn't act insane. Nor does Israel. Right. Yeah, nor really... do the attorneys. Nobody's insane. They just won't answer a freaking question. That's yeah. the whole problem with this hearing. <laughs> yeah. 20, 2019 Alpha Romeo. What about all that, Mister Hernandez? The Jeep we've already discussed, it was totaled. Um, and so there's no more Jeep. Well, so there's some letter someplace that shows that the insurance company paid off the probably the car loan on that. Um, I, I don't have possession of that letter, Judge, but I, but I, that does, I'm sure, exist. And was that a new car? The allegation in Ms. Codwin's motion was he bought a new car. Was that correct? That's correct. So your, Mr. Velasquez, your testimony is. You bought that car, it was insured, it was wrecked, it was totaled, it was paid off, and there's nothing else about that vehicle today. Is that correct? Yes, that vehicle has been paid for the insurance and full. All right. Yes is all you need to say. And so then there's the cargo van, there's a Nissan. The the Nissan Sentra, it, it's, it was an IV remodeling asset as well. I, it's my understanding of that car does not run well anymore, but I... I could be wrong. The Alfa Romeo was a lease judge that has already been returned. We did we dealt with that last. All right. So okay. So now we're talking about a Jeep that was smashed and paid for by insurance, and an Alfa Romeo that was on a lease and returned. Yeah. I, I mean, but she knows this. Yeah, she has so to. they're just they're just beefing up their filings with BS. I could be wrong, but that's that's the, the overwhelming sense I get. What do I know? I've only been doing this for 26 years. The, the, there's a Nissan that could be owned, titled to the LLC, perhaps. And <laughs> do we, do we know good. any of this or are we just imagining? <laughs> it, it seems like the supposition is the cargo van and the Nissan are titled in the name of the LLC. Does anybody know if that's actually true? Mr. Velasquez. The Nissan is under Crystal Velasquez name. Uh, the cargo van, we're running the vans under, uh, we have two other vehicles that are parking. No, the question and really, no, really, seriously, the question is, do you know? And if you don't know, I don't know is an okay answer. I'm just trying to understand what we know for certain about Under the Nissan. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. The Nissan Sentra is not working. I it's, know it's that. Like Stop. <laughs> Stop. I don't. I don't care about the status of it. I want to know what the vehicles are titled under. They are yours. Yeah. But if you don't know for some reason, just say that. Oh my God, I. <laughs> I can. I can just relate to to Judge Arth here so much. And, and he is, I don't know, you tell me, he appears to me to be sympathetic to Israel here. I, I think so. Um, I, I even get this in my line of work. I'll ask somebody a question, and they'll tell me what I, they think, I, I, what they want me to know, right, not right. what I just asked. And, man, that is aggravating. 
Right. And, and Arth is like, uh, you'll see here, I think, Arth is like, I want to help you, but God damn it, answer my question. Yeah. <sighs> uh, do we know with any certainty that the Nissan is titled in the name of the LLC? He's not. Whose name is the Nissan in? Chris Paul Velasquez, that I remember. And who might have that title? Yeah, yeah, there are really no winners here. <laughs> I have that title. Who is driving that vehicle day to day, if anybody? Nobody. So we've got the Tacoma she drives, the, the cargo van you drive, and this un, unused Sentra. Correct? Yes. Yes, and another two cargo vans. Well, oh, sweet Jesus. This whole fleet of vehicles is worth less than the billable yeah. rate of the two attorneys sitting here. Yeah. For this nonsense. Years. Yeah. It's... Who drives those cargo vans? That's a question for Crystal because she takes possession of the vehicles a <laughs> long time ago. Mr. Exactly. Hernandez? Yes, sir. If you um, you probably don't remember, but you do have some notes, I'm sure. Um, when we first agreed that Miss Velasquez would take over Ivy Remodely, we were supposed to come up with a plan, whereas Mr. Velasquez Velasquez could have some of the assets to start the new business. I, I do recall that. Okay, so he took one van, and. The center, and the reason I say that they're I, I, I just really want to know who's using the two other vans. I, d I don't know what happened to those. I don't know, Miss Godwin, Miss Castellan. <laughs> those two vans have been non working since 2019, Your Honor. So they're just sitting somewhere. So why are we talking yes. about it? They have why never been fixed. Them? All right, as a modification to temporary orders. I award Mr. Velasquez the $1,700 a month from the High Chaparral um, um, rental income. I am only doing that because he is clearly, well, he's taped up as, I, I, I have no reason to doubt his eye injury that um, that, it's an unfortunate event, but as described, I understand perfectly how that happened. Uh, but that is the only reason he is getting that money. Um, you all are not paying attention to this. There is no reason why this couldn't have been settled last year. I don't know what you're waiting for to do to settle it. I don't know why you need income tax returns. Um, but that is the only change I'm making. Um, and. Uh, I want an order that says this within three weeks. If it's not ready in three weeks, somebody's going to jail. Um, I'm not sure who, maybe Charles, but um, uh, I want that order Charles. done by January 31st. There will be no, no. Charles is cool. He's like Silent Bob. He never says a damn thing. Never. He didn't even react to the little joke. He's just like, whatever. I, I don't care. Yeah, I've heard it before. Breaks <laughs> given, y'all have a terrible history of getting orders done in this case. That needs to be done by 3.30, 4 30, uh, We're doing these at 4 o'clock now in 2023. 4 o'clock on Tuesday, January 31st. I'm going yeah, I'd I'd like, I'd like, to award Ms. Godwin $1,000 in attorney's fees for um, – her motion payable by February 28th. What else? I'm kind of, uh, well, I'm kind of interested in this Charles going to jail thing. <laughs> well, y'all need, really need to work really hard because I, I will be sad if I have to put him in jail because you didn't do your work. I'm, there is I, a proposed I'm, order that I drafted in your email right now. <laughs> that's not a joke i'm serious oh, no, i understand no no why don't you make you two look at that order fix it up right and then i'll sign it thank you your honor right, please y'all yes, this is not that complicated y'all y'all just need 
I don't know if there's a valid, you know, how much money he spent on bad things, which is alleged. I don't even know how you prove that. Um, so um, y'all need a plan. I, I'm not clear, and I'm sorry, and Ms. Castellan, I don't think you're intentionally trying to hide something from me. But I, by the documents provided, I have real no real understanding if all the property taxes have been paid on these properties for 2022 or if it's just 2021. I, that that needs to be determined. Um, if 21's been paid, 22's not due for another 20 days, you're not y'all are not going to get in any trouble. Although the monthly carry for not paying taxes is quite a bite. Um, but I, I'm 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 just not clear what's really due on the taxes. But you've got paid for properties. You got he, he has a potential uh, community obligation from his business that is in the neighborhood of twenty six thousand dollars that needs to be attended to. But it just doesn't seem like there's that much complication that you all can't go settle this. It's almost like y'all want to fight. And yeah. it's, I'm sorry. No, that no, I, I'm not looking for any. That's just the way it looks to me is that y'all would rather fight than settle. And if that's the case, these two will continue to charge you money, uh, but it's they, they have to be paid for their work. But it, it, they're just really, I, I don't understand. Um, there's no kids. Um, it just shouldn't be this hard. Actually, Judge, uh, my proposed disposition of issues, I also did actually request a, an order to mediate, but um, I'm not sure that that's, I don't have a motion to mediate on file. Well, if you're going to be on the long docket, then you have to mediate. And if if, if we're going to really get Ms. Godwin these documents in the next couple of days, then perhaps that gets her closer because she's, you know, she's got to represent Ms. Castellan's interests. And until she sees those documents, it's not fair to her to make her say, well, yeah, we can go settle this. You get her this stuff and it can be done. I think. I mean, again, you've got that whole spending money unwisely thing, and I, you know, I don't know the depth of that money, but um, and then you have the issue about this protective order that needs to be straightened out because that's that's just a mess. Yes, so, sir. Um, all right. So yeah. So. Mr. Hernandez, since you're, well, is it two orders or one order, Ms. Godwin, that's in the box? Just your one order on the compel, right? Yes, and I, and I do have, I do have the, the protect, the request for attorney's fees on the protective order itself. Well, I'm not dealing with the protective order. Okay. That's, not, that's a separate, that's a separate cause number, and it's not. Understood. Necessary. Um, I mean, there's also allegations in her motion to um, enforce the standing order that he's done things that are um, uh, annoying to harassing in terms of contact, right? Yes, Your Honor, a little bit stronger than that. Well, I, I, I know I'm trying to be more even because I don't have the pleading in front of me, but there's... You know, and, and all that goes back to a time, you know, you expect in the early stages of a divorce, things, there's more, more turmoil as the beginnings of these things, as they start up. Two years later, it'll be much more peaceful as, uh, you know, y'all are away from each other and moving on with your lives. So that that's, that's a fairly normal progression. Um, but um so i you know i i don't know if she, you know if if, they, if if it was that behavior that caused her to file the request for protective order then you know there's some potential validity there um but that's not before the court today um so miss godwin doctor up your order on the enforcement and then hernandez does the order on modifying the temporary orders Yes, sir. All right. All Thank right. You. Thank you all. You're free to go. Thank you, Judge. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I wonder if them two ain't going to get back together. That's possible. I don't know. Yeah.
I didn't right. see a lot of fighting between them, but it just seems like she's just taking him to the cleaners. But I could be wrong, and I don't know the facts. Yeah. But yeah. It, from what I'm gathering, the, the judge gave him some of the rental income. Right. But from what I'm, what I'm g- gathering is, and, and maybe some of that's premarital assets that, that her parents gave her, some shit like that, too. So, I, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that I don't know. So I don't want to say too much. But yeah. the judge did award him a little bit of rent money because he's out of work right now, and he and he and he did that. Yeah. But from my perspective, she she supposedly is doing real estate, but she's not making any money at it. She made twenty thousand dollars last year's nothing. Right. And and uh, and this guy's a contractor. So to the extent that they have rentals, the work involved in rentals is maintaining them, fixing the toilet, making sure making sure the steps are there, painting the damn porch, all all that stuff. She, he's doing. She is not doing that. Yeah. I don't know the facts, but I'm I the the balance of probabilities overwhelmingly he's doing everything that is putting those those properties in shape to to receive rental income. Right. And he is and he is getting literally all of the liability and none of the, the money. Yeah. That's I'm not privy to the prior facts, but it doesn't seem fair at first blush. Yeah, I, I was wondering how does she I don't know. Sounds like they're making the same amount of money. Why does she? And he also didn't seem like a lunatic. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe he is. You know, in the private moments, he absolutely could be. Mm-hmm. But but all these allegations, these allegations mid-divorce uh, that the guy's uh, doing all this nasty stuff, I mean, they really have to be taken with a grain of salt. They can absolutely be true, or they mm-hmm. can absolutely be manipulation to help you in the divorce settlement. Yeah, just posturing. So it's, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure these things out. And that's what the courts are there for. Um, I, I, if, if the judge thought, I could be wrong, but if the judge thought, oh, th- th- this guy's just, you know, beating her senseless or something like that, he's not going to say, you know what, I, I, you know, why don't, why don't you get half of the rental income on this until your eye gets better? Yeah. He'd just be yeah. like, pound sand, go to jail. I don't care. Yeah. That, that's kind of the way I read it. All right. You've got a great mm-hmm. clip. Yes, I do. You are officially getting kicked off, even though I got yelled at for not letting you talk. <laughs> I ain't figured out your timing just yet. <laughs> everyone thinks everyone thinks you're just an angel. They have no idea. Ooh, and I'm not going to disclose it, but they have no <laughs> idea what you did to Ben Bateman just yesterday. They have no idea. Yeah. But I, I do. I hear I you're do. still sore. <laughs> Go get your go get your stream running. I'm gonna do this for like another minute, then it's gonna to go to you. So you need to have awesome. your stream up and running. Yeah, I'm headed that way. It's it's gonna be good stuff. You've got you've it's a family law. Yeah, it is uh the list, the mom is uh extra. Very extra. So we, we don't we don't have I mean these people are relatively sane. Yeah, these these people are fine. Well, we got the mom and then we got grandma, uh the mothers of the uh mother. And I don't know if my viewers would li- like, you know, want to see crazy litigants. <laughs> they'll, <laughs> okay, they'll they love crazy that. litigants. All right, give them a minute, and and we'll all go over there. All right, awesome. Biggin, thanks for coming by. Yeah, I, I might stop by and see you, but uh, get get your stream going. Yeah. Excellent, thanks, man. All right, cool. See you. All right, everybody, you heard it here. Ben's got some. Oh, oh Ben's here. <laughs> Oh, it's a story I can't tell, but it's funny. Two of my favorites, Ben and Biggin getting into it in a very good-natured, fun way. (laughs) Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. You meet cool people on YouTube. You really do. You really do. All right. Well, there we go. Judge Arth. Someone in the comments is telling me that Judge Arth is going to stop streaming. That would be unfortunate because... Because Judge Arth is fun. But even if he does, we still have the Judge Arth playlist. And on Law Talk with Mike. And I have to say, I have to say, it's brilliant. Even if it is mine. (laughs) All right. Thank you all for coming out. I don't even know what this means, but I do have a redirect to Biggin's stream. I, I hope that means that he's over there and starting up by now. 
that you know, but uh, and uh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna do something for a second here, but I, I'm gonna try to hop on over there. Actually, I don't even know if he's gonna invite me. <laughs> I wouldn't if I was him. But uh, I I may or may not stop into Big and Stream, but I know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna watch it at least. I'll at least be in the comments. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I will see you soon.